Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Cage. I'm your host, Jim Graham, and joining me today on the line, we have a special guest. He is fresh off his victory at Bellator 151. He is Mr. Bubba Jenkins, and Bubba, thanks for coming on the show. No problem. I like the fact that you call me a special guest. I feel special. All right, let's get right into your fight here at Bellator 151 against Yamayuchi. Coming into this fight, you had to know that, of course, with his submission background, that was going to be an area that uh, people thought that may test you uh, in your skills. And consider now after the fight and considering uh, the submission attempts he put on, put on you, do you feel confident facing more jujitsu guys like that moving forward? Absolutely. Um, you know, Antonio McKee being my coach and AJ McKee being the really good, exciting submissionist that he is were perfect um, helps and samples for, for me to get ready for this fight. You know, um, we've been caught in a submission before with Georgia Karakanyan, and from that day forward, we were working on ways to not get caught in them ever again. Um, that was, I feel like those are the only ways that people are going to be able to beat me are by catching me. Um, I I've been hit pretty hard in my day, and I've never been knocked out, and maybe not in the cage, um, punch in the face, but I've had a lot of street fights and things like that where I probably should have been knocked out on multiple occasions. So I know I have a, a, a really good jaw. I know I have, you know, favor upon my life to be able to go through a lot of hard work and a lot of pain and still push forward. So, you know, with these next guys and the submissioners that are in the game, you know, they're going to be trying to take out a tank with a BB gun, and uh, it's not going to be effective to them because, you know, I'm I'm growing as a complete MMA fighter, and I'm just scratching the surface at, you know, uh, 12-2, and 11-2, whatever my record is. Uh, the only ones that I remember are the two, and that's the two losses that I have. So I'm just scratching the surface with who I am as a fighter, and, and people are going to be in trouble. The days are numbered to when I can get my hands around that belt. Now, in the first round, he kind of had you in a bad spot there as he was able to get your back while you were standing. Was he ever close to actually getting the choke against you in that first round? No, he never got under my chin. You know, that was the one thing I was focusing on, his two hands on one arm. I was focusing on it, making sure that he never got under my chin, making sure he never had control. He tried to loosen me up with some of the punches, but, you know, I just stayed calm. Had I panic or had I tried to shake them off, throw them off, do anything like that, um, it could have got me into deeper water. So I just wanted to stay calm and, and you know, put a, put a little bit of weight off of my legs onto the fence and, you know, just get a, you know, just look forward to the next opportunity to capitalize. And it happened to come with, you know, one or two seconds left with, uh, and where I turned around and hit him with a, a nice hook. But for the most part, it was, you know, him controlling controlling me for the entire first period. Now, as we got into rounds two and three, watching you against Yamayuchi, you seem to kind of just go right in to his guard and kind of test out your skills that way. And was that an adjustment you made in between rounds one and two, or did you just kind of think to yourself, hey, if I'm going to fight this guy, maybe I should just go right at him? Well, my thing is, I know I lost round one. So, you know, if I'm going to lose the fight, I'm going to go out trying my best on my shield with my best foot forward, and that is with wrestling, you know. If I'm going to lose to a guy, he, he's going to have to beat me at what I know that I'm best at. And maybe later down the line, I'll stick to a different game plan as far as, okay, let me try to bang on him, let me try to get my offense going. But, I, you know, I did a little bit of that in round two and, and a little bit of that in round three, but I said, you know, if I got to go two rounds to nine for the rest of this fight, well, then I'm going to do it with being who I am. I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to try to, you know, impress the fans at this point because I know that I got to get to the next round with a W and I got to get to the next fight with a W as well. So those are the those are the things that I was thinking. Now, he tried mainly a couple of arm bars and a little bit triangle choke set up in the second and third rounds. Were any of those were close to catching you at all? The arm bar, um, I want to say the arm bar that happened in the third, it might happen in the second, I'm not sure, but there was one that was pretty deep, and as I postured up, 
you know, with my hands locked, he kind of did a little tug and unlocked my hands for a very split second. And that's when it got tight. I can feel the pressure on my elbow. And then I was able to lock my hands again really quickly. But had I not been able to get my hand back, we could have had some trouble. I would have had to go into plan B and C of, of getting out. But for the most part, the, the plan was to power through it and, 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 and show my strength compared to his rest I mean compared to his jiu jitsu. So yeah, there was one or two that were that were that got close, but for the most part I stayed out of trouble. Now the main event of Bellator one fifty one was Joe Warren against uh Darian Caldwell. Of course, uh some great amateur wrestling uh wrestlers just like you. Of course you have some history with uh Caldwell as well and uh what did you think about that uh performance by Caldwell in the main event? I thought it was amazing, man. He had a nice suplex. You know, us wrestlers, we love to see that. That is the 360 windmill dunk of our sport. And, um, you know, for him to complete it, a perfect suplex. If he was wrestling, that would have been a touch pin. Um, the match would have been over. And, you know, for him to complete it and then lock in the rear naked choke the way he did, I mean, it was just beautiful. Um, I thought it was a masterful performance. I thought that Caldwell just stuck to his game plan and did exactly what he wanted to do. Um, so I think he's one of the best, you know, 35 pounders in the world, regardless of organization. And, you know, he's just scratching the surface as well. He hasn't stuck to his hands. And, and, you know, once us wrestlers get comfortable, once we get into the game and we understand what the rules are and, and the way you guys are playing, then we just take over the game. And that's, you can see that in, in any organization is the wrestlers will dominate. Now, looking at Joe Warren for just a moment now, he's, you know, 39 years old. He's been around uh, wrestling and now MMA for quite a long time. Do you see him coming back at all in Bellator, or do you think this may be the last we see of him? No, he's still full of fire. I happen to be in the same locker room as him, and, you know, he's still full of fire. He's still ready to go. He's not, you know, it's different between the other guys and him. He didn't, I mean, he's been in some brawls, but he hasn't been, you know, knocked silly a bunch of times and knocked out a bunch of times. So, I mean, he's still headstrong. Um, he's still aggressive. He still has all the energy and fire in the world. So I definitely can see him making a comeback and, you know, maybe not competing for the title because the young guns and the young, fresher guys are up, but still putting on exciting fights and, and being the baddest man on the planet as he likes to be. Now, during the broadcast, they mentioned Joe Warren's trying to get a spot on the 2016 USA Olympic wrestling team. And I was wondering with your background in amateur wrestling, is that something you maybe consider for this year or are you all focused on uh, MMA for the rest of your athletic career? I got no time to drive to the store when my destination is the mall. <laughs> I want that belt. I want that belt. I want that belt. Do you think Joe Warren ha has a chance to make the team? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who's on the team as far as because I know Joe Warren's a Greco guy, and that has never really been my thing. Greco's, you know, is is a different type of wrestling than the wrestling that I'm used to and the wrestling that, you know, is most popular in America. So, uh, I mean, with Greco being the way it is and, and short-lived, yeah, I think he definitely has a chance. But, you know, those young guns and the people that are coming up who want that, who are hungrier and younger, you know, he's had the success of Goto and had the success of being on world teams from Greco. So I would say the hungrier guy usually gets it. And, you know, I don't think he's going to be the hungrier guy when it comes to making a world team for or the Olympic team for, for America. I want to get your thoughts, uh, Bubba, on Bellator 149, which was a few weeks ago in Houston, the big super fight between uh, Ken Shamrock, Coyce Gracie, uh, Kimball Slice, Data 5000. And with the situation in the Kimbo Dada fight with the surrounding and his weight cut and uh, the hospital situation and all that and just how the fight played out, just what did you think about that fight as a fellow Bellator competitor? Yeah, I thought Doo Doo 2000 was really bad um, as far as the the um, athleticism goes and the, as far as professional MMA goes, Doo Doo 2000 did not make us look too good. But I do like 
what Bellator was doing with putting on these exciting, maybe some fans want to see it. I mean, all fans want to see it. Whether you're a really good fighter, a really good technician, is you really are knowing the sport, or you just kind of tune in and want to see two guys knock each other around. I mean, they are trying to capture the audience of everyone. And with the numbers that were put out there, it seems like they did the job. Now, everyone thinks that MMA is this, you know, grand sport. And if MMA, MMA was a sport, it would be in the Olympics. You know, if it was more sport oriented, it would be in the Olympics. If it was more sport oriented, you wouldn't see guys jumping around weight classes like, like you know, like they don't really matter at all. You know, catch weights and stuff like that. It's not a sport where it is dominated by sportsmanship and, and and honor and things like that. It is a sport that is dominated by fan interaction. It is dominated by entertainment. This is more of entertainment than it is a sport. It's a real WWE. And when you can capture the everyday fan that doesn't always watch fighting, that's the entertainment part that the big wigs upstairs are looking for. The people who pay the bills, they don't care who the best fighter is. They can care less. They want to know who the loudest fighter is, who the, who's the most hated fighter, who's the most beloved fighter. And that has nothing to do with their athleticism or their sportsmanship it has everything to do with their entertainment value do you or do you not move the needle and that's what a lot of people are getting confused about now speaking of wwe type things going on risen which has a agreement with bellator and spike tv and all that they just announced that in the summer they're going to have a tag team grappling match featuring sakuraba and vanderlei silva what do you think about this uh, going on, Bubba? I've never heard of anything like this before. Well, I like that you broke the news to me, <laughs> so this is new. Um, but I like it, you know. It, it goes back to what I was just saying. They're trying to open up. I mean, what we have here is what we have in the last years, a couple of years of May, is just the surface. I mean, just think if we did, a, you know, a, a duel uh, fight, you know what I mean? A, a duel, like like how wrestlers in college they they have duels. My team versus your team. Just think if you know, like how they had a couple of years ago the teams versus the teams, and they brought it back with all star names and all star team. I mean, there's so much more that you can do the two on two. Then I see in other countries they're doing five on fives, and I mean. That's why I said it's not just a sport. There's too much that can be done, and there's too much that is being done that to call it, you know, simply just a sport. Is it just the greatest sport? No, it's 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 sportainment. You know, it's a uh, intersport. That's what it should be called because everything has to go with that needle. The bottom line, and the reason why Resin Resin is doing the things like they're doing, having it on New Year's Eve, having the names that they're having, tag teaming, is because they want people to tune in and say, hey. This is new. This is different. Hey, did you hear about that tag team grappling match? And and someone who's an everyday fan is going to be like, yeah, of course I heard it. And someone who's not is going to be like, no, I haven't heard it. But, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I want to see that. So I think that they're doing a great job of developing the world and educating the world on what we have going on because some organizations are just strictly put on their fighters. Now, I want to get to, with your win, you probably move up here in the featherweight rankings for Bellator. Most of the other top featherweights are booked for upcoming fights. However, two currently are not, that being Daniel Bleichel and, of course, the champion, uh, Daniel Strauss, are not booked for any upcoming fights. Do you think your next fight may be against one of those two guys? No, because I do believe those guys are fighting each other. It may not be both on paper, but we all know if you're in the organization, if you're watching, we all know why Schultz is the number one contender, the number one guy other than being the champion. We all know that Daniel is the champion. So I think they're going to be waiting for him to heal up. And, you know, I think they're going to fight each other. It's going to be Daniel versus Daniel. And, you know, I'll, uh, you know, obviously my eyes will be peeled on that. Um, I don't think that Daniel would take a fight with anyone else. Uh, Daniel Weishel will take a fight with anyone else, risking the fact that he's up right now for the title contention. And, and Strauss being that he's got to come off surgery with his hand, um, you know, is still healing and still in the process of getting back. But um, 
I'm just patiently waiting. You know, like I said in the cage, I'm a, I'm a hitman. Um, soon I'll be the people's champion as far as the people's hitman. Whatever the people want me to do, whatever the people want me, whoever the people want me to go after, I'll go after. You know, and, and once I become the champion, then I, I won't care what weight class it will be in. If they want me to go after somebody at 155 and the people really want it, then that's the entertainment factor that I'm bringing to it. If they want me to go after a small 35 pounder, we'll find a catch weight and I'll tap that ass too. Right now I'm focused on being the 145 pound champion, but at the end of the day, I also want to be legendary and to be legendary, you got to do some legendary type things. And that includes going after whoever the fans want you. Cause right now I'll fight anybody, you know, I, I'll fight any of them. All of them can get it. None of them are safe. If indeed Vichel takes on Daniel Strauss, that could open up a possibility of fight with you against Emmanuel Sanchez, who I believe is also on a three-fight win streak, uh, much like yourself. Would that be an interesting fight for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have, you know, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Emmanuel Sanchez. He's doing a great job and he's, you know, a rising star in the sport. Um, I think that would be, you know, two big names, two two comets um, collapsing at, at a point in space where, you know, you, we got to see who, who wants it more, who's going to go get it. And, you know, I think um, Sanchez is a, is a very formidable opponent. He brings it. He's a slow starter, but he's a heavy finisher. And, you know, he's he's tough, man. So, you know, but like I said, at, at 145, my focus is the title. So anybody who they deem is you know good enough to put in front of me to stop me from that or good enough to put in front of me to catapult me to that i i'm willing to entertain it because i I want what i want and you know you can't shake me from that jim graham talking with a bellator featherweight fighter bubba jenkins here on beyond the cage and i wanted to get you out of here with this of course the big upcoming blockbuster movie superman versus batman dawn of justice is coming out in theaters in a couple weeks so as a fellow fighter i wanted you to break down who would win in a fight between batman and superman see i don't see how this movie is even going to sell superman is not human batman is human now i know there's going to be some comic nerds out there they're like yo Batman is Batman, and I can understand that. Batman is a G. He's 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 definitely put in his work. He's definitely a tough guy, but you can't punch Superman and think that that's gonna have a problem. I mean, you, you can do stuff. I mean, Batman can't be shot by bullets. He can't be. I mean, Superman can't be shot by bullets. He can't be destroyed other than having kryptonite. And then your ass got to get to the kryptonite, which he's faster than a speed bullet. All this other stuff. Uh, Superman smashes Batman. It's it's not even a. So I, I mean, if I was Superman, I would grab Batman by his neck and I would take him to outer space and watch him fade away and die. You know what I mean? Like, I'm Superman. I could do anything and everything other than deal with kryptonite. And if, you know, you bring in other aspects into it, which is the kryptonite, then I just have to stay away from the kryptonite and you can't fight me until, you know, we, we can get to an even ground. And then I, I'd smash him. And, and that's how I would do it if I was Superman. I think it's an easy, easy fight. But, of course, Hollywood's going to make it seem as though Batman can contend, which isn't the case. <laughs> he is Bellator featherweight fighter Bubba Jenkins. And Bubba, thanks again for coming on the show. I really appreciate it and I look forward to your next fight. No doubt, my man. I appreciate you having me. Once again, that was Bubba Jenkins right here on Beyond the Cage.